Hey guys, Aussie Expat here, and today I will be going through my watch collection. Um, this is kind of the final video, at least for this part of the collection, which is basically still sports watches. Just kill no discretion, your mind is a weapon. 11 11 is time for progression. Oh! You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy, buddy. Yeah. So I've had a channel for a long time. I don't like SOTC videos, but what I'm gonna do is I'll do it. Here it is. I it's it's basically final. It's basically final. I don't I don't have anything that I, I, I really want. There's maybe one thing that I'd swap out, but you know, most people wouldn't even see that as a real swap. But you know, it I, I got the, the final piece to it last year. I'll go through it in chronological order. And you know, the, I I did what I think a lot of people should do, and that is just look at what you want first and then look at making it happen. Instead of like getting caught up on like next, 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 so incrementally, I had a vision for what I wanted and I set out to get every piece that I wanted. So in true Bark and Jack style, I've got a coffee. And Please like and subscribe if you like this. I've got a link in the Discord down below if you want to talk watches, how to get watches, and you know, just josh on each other's tastes. Um, please let me know. Okay, let's get to it. So first of all, um, it's actually now exceedingly rare that I'll have all of my watches in one place, and it means that having a watch box is not that important to me, and. Yeah, so I've got the Nanook 910. This is good for 10 watches. My collection isn't really 10 watches. And I think watch boxes and slots are sort of unhealthy behavior. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, here's the collection. I'll go through in chronological behavior, chronological order, but just straight up from the top, I'm a real fan of Archie Luxury. And for the longest period of time, he simply said, Steel, Rolex Steel Sports. So that's that's what my collection is, Rolex Steel Sports, <laughs> basically. Um, I should get a collection review done of Archie sometime. Uh, I don't know, I get the feeling he doesn't, doesn't really like me that much. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, he, he's, he's very polite, you know what I mean? But um, to some extent, you know, I think there's a little bit of you know, I've gotten these easier than some people, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you like the order in which I got them and that sort of thing. I've revealed that before, but I just, you know, I, I just started on the first one and things just like spiraled out of control really quickly and had a good relationship and it, you know, it worked out. So I've been collecting for many years and the first watch that I ever fall in love with was the Submariner and in particular when I was uh, working in Switzerland in 2000s uh, for one year, I won't say which year, yeah, it, I, I came across Swiss watches basically and the one that my friend had that I was quite close to was, was an LV, so not this LV, so this was like 2007 and I just loved the case. I just loved that it was, you know, a solid piece of metal and it made my like folded metal um, Casio G-Shock just look like utter crap. And, you know, since that time, there's, you know, a lot of more budget watches I've come into contact with that do have a, a proper case. Um, and I did have, you know, modest watches uh, prior to getting my first, um, steel sports Rolex and in particular, uh, you know, Seikos. So I, I really got into Seikos. I uh, didn't go too crazy. I got three Seikos in total. Um, so I didn't go too crazy before moving up. Um, spent a lot of time with them, that's for sure. And I still love them. So this um, Submariner, I was my first 
uh, purchase, uh, but not first purchase on my account. So the first purchase was a Yacht Master 37 in Everose for my wife. Obviously being precious metal and maybe even today it's seen as sort of a, a reasonable first purchase. Very expensive first purchase, but I was very happy to get that for my wife. Um, it was a watch that I said, if you could have anything in the entire Rolex collection, what would it be? And she looked through it and I sort of highlighted the Yacht Master. I sort of pointed it out myself. I kind of liked it and uh, she liked it too. And what I did was I mocked up a Yacht Master, you know, on, on Everose a Yachtmaster Everose using a Seiko diver and putting a black rubber strap on it. And she got a lot of compliments with it. She really liked the versatility of having rubber and gold, this sort of do everything sort of combination of materials. So we got that. I had the option of like asking for like the, the Hulk potentially, but I felt that because I didn't know the relationship, I didn't know how it plays, I knew the Hulk would be very difficult regardless and it was basically discontinued at that point but there would have been a few floating in i was asked whether i wanted the 11 series or the 12 series and this one is clearly the 12 i said no i'll, I'll wait for the 12 so this is um probably the first month or two of 12s that came out and so my essay did so well and um got me this piece it was just extraordinary at that point i said to my wife You've got the watch that you want. I've got the watch that I want, you know, my number one preference. And we don't need to go any further than this. Like, this is it. You know what I mean? I know, like, we've got now a functioning relationship, and but we don't have to do anything. So we sort of, like, had that question... But in the meantime, I just sort of like signal my interest in the, in the back girl. And also expressed some interest in the Pelagos. Like, you know, just, I was, I was interested in the Pelagos. Um, Bark and Jack um, did an amazing review of the Pelagos. It's still one of the best watch reviews I've ever seen. And I just genuinely, genuinely love the Pelagos. I've always loved and admired like the serious professional dive watch, like the uh, Sea Dweller. Um, but I felt like the current Sea Dweller was just too big for me. I don't have a very big wrist, just six inches. And I felt that, you know, the real heart of Sea Dweller is a watch that is like the ultimate diver. And I just felt that titanium with an all brush look, no polished surfaces, just made a little bit more sense from a, a no-nonsense straight-up diver. And so that's what had me gravitating towards Apologos. And it looks so different compared to the other watches with, you know, the gunmetal titanium, the chamfered edges. I just love this watch. So what happened was I get a call saying, would I be interested in, in buying the Batgirl and, you know, also maybe pick up the, the Pelagos. And um, I jumped at that opportunity, absolutely. The one thing with the Pelagos I had to be a little bit more concerned about was that QC on Tudors isn't as good as it really should be, uh, honestly. And I did see a lot of uh, Pelagoses in the case, which the bezel just would never actually line up with 12. And that really does irk me. I'm, I wouldn't describe myself as OCD, but I really don't like when things at zero aren't zero. <laughs> so I did ask for like a, a new one and I inspected it. And um, this is fantastic. This, like when I show my collection to my, to my kid, to my son, I ask, which one do you like the most? He likes the blue. So this one's like a real summer watch. Um, it's really sort of, I love how it looks on my wrist where it's just, it just looks like a piece of diving equipment. It's very, very tall, like no nonsense. Anyway, so the call for the Batgirl like literally came like two to three weeks after the Submariner. So I really didn't have any time between the Submariner and the Batgirl coming in to really enjoy finish. Like this is my first luxury watch over here, this one. 
And so I really wasn't over it in any way. And I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a frugal guy and I just felt like a little bit weird pulling the trigger on this. And I just didn't really feel like I was ready for it. And because this absolutely at the time was my number one pick out of the Rolex catalog, like aesthetically, which one was the most beautiful? I, I would say the Batgirl every single time. And yeah, to, to effectively get my grail, I described it to my AD as this is, this is my grail. Um, I, I really wasn't ready for it. So I had them size it for my wife. I wouldn't wear it until a suitable special occasion would come. And so this remained in the safe for almost uh, two years until my 10th anniversary. And then my wife and I, we swapped watches I bought her a uh, Everose uh, Daytona and she gave me the Batgirl. So yeah, I, I like the Batgirl a lot. I much prefer it over the, the Pepsi. Uh, I just feel that the Pepsi colors don't really stand out while the blue and the black, like this blue is a lot more saturated and unadulterated compared to the, the Pepsis, which is, basically two shades of purple. Um, I would love a Pepsi once they get those colors right, but until then, um, this is the best GMT in my book. Um, if I really wanted a Pepsi, I'd probably prefer like the six, you know, one, one, six, six, you know, six, seven, sorry, 1675, something like that, something older, um, just to get the aluminum bezel. So yeah, I love this watch. And then because it's all sports, this is the only one for Jubilee bracelet. So this one's really cool. This one looks really hot on the wrist. Overall, I would say this is the best looking watch. This is the most head turning watch um, that I've got. I wore it recently on a trip to Seattle, um, doing the whole travel thing with a, no time zone shifts though. Um, beautiful watch, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watch. Okay, so Pelagos and that girl done then soon after that i purchased on the gray market the hulk <laughs> I, at the time i just got very obsessed with a having a um a birthier watch for my son and i figured if i'm going gray i may as well just get the hulk like i mean it would be silly to get a gray for the sub which would be just completely redundant so it had to be hulk and uh, yeah, incredible watch. I was able to find someone at my workplace that had one, we bought it off the Rolex forums, but they, they were actually an employee for, for my employer. So um, that was really nice. Uh, I, I really just do fist pumps whenever I pick up a sub and wear it, like whichever color, they're both just super awesome. Like seeing just black, it's, it's cool, Hulk, it was very cool. What I, what I have come to realize is that in, in the field of like just, you know, hype steel sports watches, um, I feel the Hulk is the most special because uh, one, it's discontinued, although the Daytona is now discontinued. So it's, you know, it's a little, it clearly dates it just a little bit. So, you know, the, the um, so it's a little bit more special in that regard and that's discontinued it's always kind of like you know that the hulk is a phenomenon and it's rolex's green colors so this will always be very special um i really think rolex really outdid themselves on this one like they made it too good like they really didn't have to do this and then the starbucks like they removed the dial now so 100 percent love this watch very versatile you might hear a baby in the background like this is like dad trouble so uh, soon after that was the Explorer One. When these came out, um, I think there was a little bit of a, a mix of sentiment where I think like the ADs were just, you know, people would always pick something up and buy it and it's really that simple. And I think there was like from the WIS community, from the wristwatch community, this thing was like no brainer, awesome. but. I think there's a lot of people out there that um, just sort of didn't really appreciate this watch that much. 
Um, and so they probably got a few knockbacks and then I get a call <laughs> basically around my birthday of that year when this came out. This is um, a wonderful watch. I've, I've learned that in a lot of ways, this is the best watch that Rolex make. Like you've got everything that represents Rolex in this watch. And that is incredible design, incredible quality, but nothing is say overboard. Like they didn't put anything in here that wasn't good, that wasn't useful. Time only wind and wear. It has incredible heritage. So it's just an example of just heritage, design, un unreal build quality and robust movement, right? You're like time only. It's the simplest movement that you can get from Rolex and it just represents you know, how do you say, straightforward watch, you know what I mean? And it, I just love the indices. It's just a beautiful watch. And it's so small, you can wear it playing sport. It's, it's incredible. I, I would like to be able to put on a strap now and then, but I've never found a 19 millimeter strap that I'd like truly enjoy. Um, but honestly, just wear it with the bracelet. It's good, it's fantastic. So Explorer, very special watch. I wore that the most for the longest period of time. Okay, moving on. Uh, next watch was a Cartier tank for my mum, and then the Speedmaster. So I got this Speedmaster as soon, as soon as it came out you know, of um, basically super being super hot, where it was so hot you just couldn't buy it. So it was those initial months after rollout, it just, you know, it was difficult to get. Um, so I waited till after that and that's when I picked it up. I sort of, why did I want this? I'm like, oh, this one was really a case of tick box collecting. And I kind of regret it and I kind of don't. I regret it in that my motivations for getting it weren't very good, honestly. I got it because, oh, I don't have a chronograph. Oh, I'll never get a Daytona. So let's get an Omega. <laughs> well, that's, that's not entirely true. I was basically told that, you know, you know, my account's getting close to where I could ask for a Daytona and, you know, I need to pick up some pieces and, um, you know, what, what, what do I want, you know? Um, before getting, getting to the Daytona. And, you know, so I bought my mum the Cardia tank. That was her seventh birthday. I think that's a very appropriate watch for an older lady who hasn't had a nice watch before. Um, the quartz on that makes it quite suitable. They don't have to worry about setting it and stuff like that. I wish it was water resistant, you know, or at least more water resistant. Can't have everything. But everyone says, you gotta have a chrono, you gotta have a moon watch, you gotta have a speedy. And um, that's why I got it. I got it because it was soft. I needed, I needed a soft piece on my account. I kind of wanted to tick that tick box of having a chrono, of having a moon watch. I wanted a moon watch, but that's not me looking at the watch and just enjoying it. You know what I mean? Like these are all like thinking about things in my head rather than looking at something and feeling something. There's nothing wrong with this watch, like in person. So you'll hear me complain about this watch a lot more than <laughs> I really should. Oh, this is not gonna go, go let this go. There we go. Um, it, it's a great watch. Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. It's, it is, it is a great watch, but I, my motivations for getting it were, were bad. And over time, I think I'll, will grow to like this watch a lot more. It is a beautiful watch in many ways, a very versatile watch in many ways. But once you start getting a pretty decent sized steel sports collection, you don't really need versatility. You need like to fill like certain reasons for wearing it. And the only real reason to wear this is to, one, are you going someplace that Rolex, you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be wearing it. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be wearing a Rolex. That's, that's one. And, and I don't mean like, oh, Rolex is too much money or something like that. The Speedmaster's good money too. But I just mean like, 
you might be going somewhere and they don't specifically like Rolex. That's been an occasion on, on multiple occasions for me. Like I, there's someone and you know, I'm going to their place and they don't like Rolex. I'm like, okay, well, we're the speedy. <laughs> um, and you know, for any sort of like space events, anything, anything that's patriotic, I wear. So I wore this to my like US citizenship uh, oath taking ceremony. Um, I wear it whenever I watch anything space related. I wore it to a Star Trek convention with um, where I had a, there was a photo op of uh, Shatner and I did that with my son. I had the moon watch on. I, I couldn't see what watch Shatner had on because I know he's got one of these, the Hesalite version, because he, he did the SpaceX um, trip. So yeah, overall, like, you know, I, I, I would recommend the Speedmaster to people who want a one and done and they're not really interested in the game and Omega is enough of a brand for them to go for. Um, I just, um, I find that a lot in the Omega community kind of a little cringeworthy. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a good watch. It's pretty straightforward. But between, say, the Explorer and the Speedy, I'd rather the Speedy. I mean, sorry, I'd rather the Explorer. Um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. I just would rather the Explorer. It, it sort of satisfies the same niche, as in they're both very sporty. This one happens to be water resistant. This one happens to be classier. This one is a Rolex. And this just represents to me a stronger one and done than this. And I find the bracelet on this just feels a little bit cheap. Um, it is what it is, it just feels a little bit cheap. Uh, it's, it's to do with like the finishing, it, it just feels a little sharp. It's not harsh or anything, it's just this kind of thing that reminds me of cheaper, cheaper bracelets. Um, following that, was the Daytona and Black Bay 58. So, uh, you know, it was about like five months after getting the, the Speedy. Um, I popped into my AD the day after Christmas and um, said, I'd, I'd like a Panda. I'd like a Panda Daytona. I knew my account was in the position to, to ask for it. Um, my SA turned around and said, would you like one? I've got one in the safe. <laughs> it was, it, it was like that. I mean, there was a little bit of a, the next few moments where I was just, you know, like, oh my God, really? And I gave her a hug and, um, she says, uh, I just got to get approval from management. And there was a little bit of a heart and throat moment when the manager wasn't in. And so they were calling him and, you know, there's a little bit of back and forward and I didn't know what was happening. You know, basically things are hanging on a thread and, uh, she comes back and she goes, it's yours. And so then, you know, I gave her a big hug and she brings it out and yeah, the, the rest is like pretty boring, but yeah, I got, got the Daytona. So I do have a video on that. So it did take quite a lot, quite a while to get to the position, but from my SA's perspective, the day that I asked for is the day that she gave it to me. Um, I'll talk in detail about it in a second, but um, I picked up the Black Bay 58 on, on that day. And this is one that um, I tried my best to hate. I really, really did. I tried my best to hate. And I just sort of said, nah, I don't like, uh, you know, vintage, faux vintage watches. A watch that look, tries to look like an older watch. I mean, that's just, that's just fake, you know? And really that, that wasn't a very nuanced idea at all. Um, I kind of felt at the time that you should just buy a vintage Rolex. And, and the reality is like buying a vintage Rolex is tricky and hard work. Would I love a big crown sub? Yes. Would I wear it the same way I wear this? Absolutely not. So in many ways you could still have this if you had your big crown sub. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't, but they serve very different purposes. This I can wear everywhere and it's cool. It's just, you know, it's the wink and the nod. Um, 
38 millimeter just suits my smaller wrist very, very well. And uh, yeah, we're gonna say that other people haven't already said about this. So I've worn this a lot. This is my hot tub watch. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't care about it as much as my Pelagos, um, but I just love wearing it and doing everything with it. The Daytona, um, initially, you know, I was really potentially shying away from this. I didn't think it would ever happen. I started looking at it as from the perspective of maybe it will happen because I'm just going to pay for it on the gray market. I feel like this watch is worth about 30,000. You know, I was willing to pay that. I said at the time it was, you know, it was 32 and I said, I would pay that ultimately. These are now around 38 because of the discontinuation. Who knows where it goes next? Doesn't really matter. Um, hugely underrated watch. I only hear lots and lots of people saying, oh, but only at retail, it's worth it at retail. This is head and shoulders a way better watch than any of these. It really is. This is very much next level. And what I mean is just, it just exudes quality. It, it's honestly, I mean, yeah, you're gonna tell me that like this slab sided thing over here is in the same class as this, really? Right? You know what I mean? It's, this is next, look how thin that is. It's got a chronograph in there. This, this is, you know, date, time and date. Same size if it's a time only. You know what I mean? This is incredible, especially in contrast to the Speedmaster. Like the pushes on this are really beautiful. While the pushes on, on the Speedmaster, listen, you can hear it from here. It feels like you're breaking something every time you push it. That being said, I've learned to not use the, the, the chronograph function. Like it's just, if you want to time something, just get a dive bezel. Like that's <laughs> it's just much more convenient for timing. The amount of things I need to time down to the second, it's like none. And this is just much harder to read and use. This watch is very versatile. You can wear it in jeans and t-shirt. You can wear it to a restaurant for your birthday. You can wear it to a wedding. You can wear it to like an equestrian event. If you throw it on a leather strap, it gives it that sort of sort of look. Uh, extremely versatile and very refined. Yeah, this this is a do everything watch, but not quite as do everything as say the Explorer. I think. You know, if if you want to go through one watch for the rest of your life, I'd say the Explorer is probably slightly better than Daytona. I mean, this is getting, you know, this is pretty high end. So it means I don't really genuinely feel comfortable about wearing it literally everywhere. Um, but the Explorer, no problem. And it doesn't matter what company, you know what I mean? As in, if I'm with watch people, it's cool. If I'm not with watch people, it just looks like innocuous, nice steel watch, you know? It's just straight up cool, the Explorer. So yeah, the only thing that I would give it a knock for is, you know, it's got a lot of high polish parts. So I, I don't like putting it through literally everything. So I, I like to not take my watch off before I go to bed. But depending on what my son has done for the day and whether or not he's jumped in our bed, our, our bed might be full of sand. You know what I mean? So I, I don't like sleeping with in a, in a bed of sand with this watch, okay? Forgive me for not wearing it to, to bed at night. And that's just something I'm, I'm more willing to do with the sub, you know? Um, it's not, not that it'll get trashed or anything, but if there is like a fine, a fine line, clearly the, the satin finish is a lot, a lot more forgiving in terms of that. So yeah, it's the uh, Daytona. This weirds ADs out. If you go to a new AD and they see you wearing this, it, it weirds them out. It really does. I don't know what to say uh, apart from that. It just, it really weirds them out. It's clearly sort of the end game watch. And I think in the, in the watch, you know, sales game, the whole game is predicated on basically how long, 
how many watches can you get out of the collector before you give them a panda <laughs> or ghost them and not give them the panda so that's 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 why I think it weirds them out because they don't really know what to the to do with the clients that already have one of these and I, I'll, I'll get to the end of my collection first but the other the last watch that came in for my birthday last year I won't even bother with the moon swatch it's the last one uh, uh, Explorer 2 this is I just love this so Archie Luxury is just known for just loving the Polo Explorer 2 I love it too I think just the white dial the black the contrast I love the big orange hand I'll take this over the 16570 every day but I would not say no to having this and the 16570 in the same collection you know it's just a gorgeous watch one thing I've noticed in the update to this which slimmed the crown guards slimmed the lug guards so slimmed the lugs and increased the bracelet and it's also something that they did with the submariner and effectively something that they kind of did with the design of the explorer so these are these are all the most recent designs where they really slim the profile down where those lugs are sort of tapering in such that from a from a little bit of a distance there isn't much like if I just move this around a bit it's in motion it looks like an integrated bracelet watch and I think that's what they're sort of going for clearly that's what's most popular um, as opposed to like say this where it's got very prominent lugs you know it looks like a watch sitting on top of a, a bracelet this you know from a distance it looks like an integrated bracelet watch and I think that's just what Rolex are kind of going for lovely watch I, I prefer this if I've got a true GMT so I, I traveled a trip to Austin last year with this um, it's lovely you know what I mean most people don't know what this is they sort of gloss over it I, this is super underrated but don't you dare try get one because these are exceedingly rare so I weighed I asked for this in January ended up getting it June for my birthday last year and you know it was very very I thought it would come within a couple of months or something like that you're going to sell me a Daytona but it's going to take six months to get this so this in within my collection was the longest wait time was the Explorer 2 and I found subsequent to asking people about it their experiences are also that it was the longest wait time and this finished my collection and I thought well what's what's kind of next <laughs> well for for steel sports uh, essentially you know Rolex steel sports uh, there this is complete this is definitely complete I am looking at you know I, I, I said after getting the Explorer 2 no more side grades um, you know upgrades only that that leaves very little little to look at considering my wife has a gold Daytona that's you know in the family's collection so it has to be an upgrade from a gold Daytona uh, that leaves so if I'm going to have a speedy in the collection I'd prefer if it was the Ed White with the 321 movement so I'm going to start asking about that I will not fight for it but I will ask for it we'll see what happens if that happens then this one gets sold that would be the first time I've ever sold a watch I'm not going to own both an Ed White and that watch at the same time that would be really dumb I don't really want any of the other Rolexes um, I like the Air King but I've got enough 40 millimeter watches and Explorer 40 I don't prefer that over this I've got enough 40 millimeter watches this gives me the right feel that I want and this is the OG and it fits on my tiny wrist so this is perfect I don't want a date just my wife's got the best date just you can get in my opinion which is the palm motif date just that's my opinion um, oyster perpetual is nice but that's very similar to this oyster perpetual is a little bit bigger than this and even in the 36 model but this is what I'd like I'm not really into getting more color if I didn't have the palagos I would think about it I would think about getting maybe an OP but that is what it is I, I've got this one and this one if I, I need some color and to some extent this one 
And then the brightness of white also offers that sort of playfulness as well. So really from here, it's just going to be some pretty serious, serious watches, but not steel sports watches, I think. Um, or maybe. We're, we're talking Patek, Nautilus, or Aquanaut, probably Nautilus. That's probably what I prefer. And the Royal Oak. I'm not super sold on the Royal Oak, but to some extent, I kind of feel that I have to own it to really understand. So I don't want to lose my hat on it. Probably the 15510, so the current 41 millimeter in white. I have worn it, it sort of fits. I gotta try the 15550, the, the smaller one um, also, and, and see if that's just more of a perfect fit. If it fits perfectly, I won't gripe about getting not the 41 millimeter. So, so that's on the cards. What else, what else? Ah, obviously not steel, um, but there are Daytonas that I would be interested in. So that new Le Mans Daytona and the Platinum Daytona. But by all accounts, while I've gotten these watches, really those, you know, Platinum Daytona and that new Le Mans Daytona, like that is like stratospherically above my level of, of account, basically. Um, and I think my chances are actually just very, very low on that one. So I'd say the, the, the chances of me adding a watch to this collection are very, very, very slim. I'm talking maybe there's like a 5% chance I get an Ed White, a 1% chance I get a Platinum Daytona, and a slightly less than 1% chance that I get that Le Mans Daytona. So there's not many opportunities left. And I don't think I'm going to go gray for any of these, except for maybe the Royal Oak. I think AP prices are so low, they're actually tempting. Okay, so that's my collection. Um, this might be the last state of the collection video. And if I add one watch, there'll be a video on that one watch. So you don't really need a state of the collection video ever again. So. That's me signing out. Please like and subscribe. Hey, hit me up on Discord. We can just chat. It's cool. We, we throw jokes at each other almost exclusively in that chat channel. So <laughs> please join us. And until next time, see you around. Should just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon. 11 11 is time for progression. Oh! You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy.